Uh, we will begin our lesson for tonight. Uh, and uh, we will be tackling on uh, the 20th chapter of the Westminster Confession of Faith concerning uh, uh, Christian freedom and Christian liberty. That is the uh, Christian freedom and the liberty of conscience. But kinahanglan uh, mangyudni for us to truly understand what is uh, freedom and what is liberty. So we have to uh, survey it according to the understanding uh, that uh, we we have uh, been studying uh, from schools or uh, sa, sa atong society or uh, we will compare that with the scripture later on we will tackle the confession itself or uh, din his confession or we will uh, will we, we're going to 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 talk about uh, the the biblical idea of freedom and liberty when what it is about in regards to how Christians would uh, live their life their lives so this is a a sort of introductory to, to for us to to be able to know the concept of freedom and liberty so this is in an introductory remarks on on those things and uh, of course, later on, we will delve on the confession itself. But uh, suffice it for now, for us to be able to know what is meant by this in the history of mankind, in the history of nations. Now, uh, people often use the words freedom and liberty inter interchangeably because they essentially mean almost the same thing. Uh, both of these words convey the idea of being free from external coercion, uh, external control and oppression to do and not to do something against one's will. So, but pasabot ni ini nga ang idea sa freedom or sa liberty sa sa kagawasan. Actually, uh, isa ra ka word sa 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 Cebuano, isa lang ka word nga ang ang freedom o ang ang liberty, uh, isa lang ang word nga ginagamit sa sa ato sa Cebuano o ang kagawasan wa uh, nagilain so but uh, in english of course there are th those two words uh, refer almost to the same thing they both refer to a condition in which a person can act or cannot act without being restrained so dunay ang meaning niya na they have they, the person has say, the, the the choice to to do or not to do something and the, his choice is not uh, restricted or is not uh, uh, restrained by anybody outside of himself both words uh, refer to the idea that every person has the right to think or not to think to act or not to act by free choice as long as those thoughts and actions or the absence of thoughts and actions do not infringe upon someone else's freedom or liberty this kining uh, concept uh, uh, gi, 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 gi advocate kini uh, ni John Stuart Mill uh, in his book on liberty. However, upon closer scrutiny, freedom and liberty reveal some subtle differences. Freedom, on one hand, is a Greek concept that denotes liberation from moral and sensual constraints, uh, enabling unfettered thoughts and actions. A passions. The word liberty, on the other hand, which comes from the word from the, from the Latin word libertas, is often associated with the concept of being free from political tyranny, oppression, and slavery. Uh, it has its roots in Roman thought. In this context, individuals are wary of anyone or any group in the sense that it. Uh, uh, that those groups may might infringe upon collective rights of the citizens from restraints or coercion. It is a broader concept in a sense that in the sense that it encompasses the collective condition of a population under the absence of despotic uh, rule by tyrants. The concept of liberty was adopted by the American founders from their English predecessors. Makita din hi, mga kaigsunan, nga ang uh, ang kining uh, 
kini nga concept uh, gipasapasa from the ancient times with the, those Greeks and Romans their civilization o napasa sa Europe and to English people and later on to the Americans so uh, diha atong survey what do they mean by uh, freedom now ang uh, sa, sa literatura sa mga panitikan uh, makita usab ang ang kini nga concept uh, particularly with the the works of the greek philosophers such as plato sa passage sa republic in a passage sa iyang kanang libro nga republic uh, dunay characters ang pangalan ni si Cephalos usa ka tigulang nga tao Cephalos shares his perspective uh, in that book on old age and its relationship to freedom. Uh, in the Republic, Cephalos expresses that he, he has grown older, he has found a greater pleasure and charm in conversation, highlighting the shifting priorities as one ages, as he claims. One of the key ideas here is uh, Cephalos' view of freedom in old age. He suggests that old age brings a sense of calm and freedom because as people age, the passions and desires that often entangle younger individuals start to fade. Kanang kibot, mga butpa sa ni Ana, ang mga kung batanon pa, daghan pa ang mu iyang ang daghan pa ang mga butang nga mukuha sa iyang sa iyang atensyon so wala siya ay kagawasan to to pursue sa tinuod nga meaning sa kinabuhi daghan ang mubira kaniya so uh, he likens these passions to mad and furious masters from which one is freed as they grow older uh, in essence he believes that with age individuals become less driven by the impulsive desires of youth such as the pursuit of pleasures ambitions or romantic love alimbawa you, you consider this statement sa sa, sa uh, republic ni plato matonia i will tell you socrates what my own feeling is men of my age flock together we are birds of a feather as the old proverb says, and at our meetings, the tale of my acquaintance commonly is, I cannot eat, I cannot drink. The pleasures of youth and love are fled away. There was a good time once, but now that is gone, and life no longer life. Some complain of the slights which are put upon them by relations, and they will tell you sadly of how many evils their old age, or old age is the cause. But to me, Socrates, these complainers seem to blame that which is not really in fault. For if old age were the cause, I too being old and every other old man would have felt as they do. But this is not my own experience, nor that of others whom I have known. How well I remember the aged poet Sophocles when in answer to the question, how does love suit with age, Sophocles, are you still the man you were? Peace, his he replied, most gladly I have escaped that thing of which you speak. I feel as if I had escaped from a mad and furious master. His words have often occurred to my mind since, and they seem as good to me now as at the time when he uttered them. For certainly old age has a great sense of calm and freedom. When the passions relax their hold, then as Sophocles says, we are freed from the grasp not of one and mad master only, but of many. The truth is, Socrates, that these regrets and also their complaints about relations are to be attributed to the same cause, which is not old age, but men's characters and tempers. For he who is of a calm and happy nature will hardly feel the pressure of age. But to him who is of an opposite disposition, youth and age are equally a burden. Now, so ang kaniyang concept sa sa kang Plato, which is uh, which uh, Plato put uh, in the mouth of Cephalus, 
This perspective on freedom in old age can be understood in few ways. Panalita. A freedom from impulsive desires. Uh, he suggests that at, at, as people age, they gain freedom from the impulsive and often uncontrollable desires of youth. This can be seen as a form of self-control and liberation from the constant pursuit of immediate pleasures. Cephalos implies that the complaints and regrets often associated with old age, such as feeling neglected by relatives or being unable to partake in youthful activities, are not inherent to old age itself. Instead, he attributes them to people's individual characters and temperaments, those who have a calm and content nature, regardless of age, are more likely to experience old age as a time of freedom from these worries. Cephalos comment, comments reflect the philosophical nature of the dialogue between him and Socrates. He invites Socrates to engage in philosophical discourse, indicating that intellectual pursuits and meaningful conversations are sources of freedom and satisfaction, especially in old age. So ang ang pinaka uh, uh, unod ni ini, ang essence ni ini kan, na conversation, kini nga words ni Cephalos. Mao nga do na nay freedom ang tao daw nga wala na kaayo daghan pa nga impediments sa iyang panghunahuna, wala na daghan nga temptations. Kundi uh, ang iyang panghunahuna direct na sa iyang uh, pursuit sa sa wisdom, sa pursuit sa meaning sa life, sa sa philosophy pa nang dito. So wala ang meaning ni ini is ang kadtong mga youthful nga characteristics, mga youthful nga passions. Uh, mawala na kay kadto sila mga masters, murag mga mga disputic dis uh, mga dispute disputic uh, masters nga mooy uh, mooy kasagaran nag enslave sa mga batan o. So Plato's portrayal of Cephalus's perspective of old age suggests that freedom in old age arises not from physical abilities or circumstances, but from a person's mindset, character, and the ability to shift one's focus from youthful passions to more contemplative and fulfilling pursuits like philosophical discussions and reflection. This idea aligns with the broader philosophical themes of self-mastery and the pursuit of wisdom that are prevalent in Plato's writings. So sa, sa Greeks ang ang idea sa freedom is more on philosophical nga ang tao the more nga nga siya uh, tigulang na uh, the more nga mature ang yang pangunauna the more nga ma focus siya ug mawala na ang left and right nga mga tintasyon sa iyang pangunauna labi na ang mga pangunauna nga prevalent sa sa, sa mga batano Now kang Aristotle or what's Aristotle's concept of freedom? Uh, akong gitanaw ang kanang libro niya sa kanang gitaw ng Nikom Makayan Ethics. Uh, libro ni Aristotle. Uh, diha nag-discuss siya sa concept sa pleasure and ug ang connection ini sa human nature o sa freedom. Uh, mismo ang libro, wala gid kayo will define on sa freedom, pero ang, ang uh, freedom makita din eh, nga usa siya ka kabutang nga uh, uh, nga prevalent din hi sa sa, sa mga particular nga book now akong gi gi gi, gi butang ang ang referensya ni ana sa footnotes while the passage does not explicitly define freedom it provides insights into aristotle's understanding of the relationship between pleasure, virtue, and a good life, which can be related to his concept of freedom. Pleasure, according to Aristotle, is intimately connected to human nature. He observes that in education and moral guidance, people are often motivated by pleasure and pain. Now, pleasure is considered a fundamental aspect of human experience sa ilang panahon, sa conceptus mang griego. And it influences human behavior significantly. He, that is Plato, suggests that the enjoyment of things we ought to enjoy and aversion of things we ought to avoid are crucial for developing virtue of character. 
Aristotle sees a connection between moral virtue and the ability to make choices related to pleasure and pain. Virtuous individuals are those who make choices that align with their moral values and rationality. Accordingly, understanding pleasure and its role in human life is essential as it has a significant impact, both virtue and happiness. This understanding is important for achieving a balanced and fulfilling life. While Aristotle does not explicitly define freedom in this passage, sa Nicomachean ethics niya, his discussion of pleasure, virtue, and a good life provides insight into his understanding of freedom. Aristotle's view appears to be that true freedom involves making choices in accordance with virtue and rationality including choices related to pleasure and pain. The virtuous persons exercise self-control, seeks a balanced and fulfilling life, and does not let the pursuit of pleasure enslave them. Therefore, freedom, in Aristotle's, Aristotle's view, is closely tied to the pursuit of a virtuous and rational life in accordance with one's human nature. True freedom is associated with the use of reason to make deliberate, thoughtful choices. Acting in accordance with reason and moral virtue leads to a more fulfilling and free life. So, muna ang, uh, ang idea of freedom in, in the Greek uh, philosophy. Uh, sa kang, kang Plato, is, uh, ang idea is uh, uh, dili na siya na wala yung nag-restraints wala yung nag-constrain nga kaning uh, youthful passions or uh, yung, sa human nature nga mao'y mag-enslave sa tao not in order for him not to pursue the 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 most important aspect of human pursuits and that is the pursuits of wisdom o din he sa kang uh, kang uh, Aristotle it's the pursuit of happiness uh, the 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 pursuit of uh, of happiness the choice of a pleasure over pain pero kinahanglan with a rational uh, uh, choice kini na ay kibalid dili irrational kinahanglan na ay reason nga mo'y nagpatigbabaw so that ang tao uh, makahimo sa iyang choices rightful choices o kanang rightful o kanang right choices correct choices muna siya ang iyang definition sa sa freedom now that thought of freedom and liberty of course as i said before they are sino almost synonymous but of course they are different because uh, uh, fr uh as we we can, we will see uh, very shortly uh, sa, sa sa roman sa, sa rome ang mga romans they they think of us in terms uh they think of freedom in terms of liberty okay so uh they they think of one's uh, freeness being free uh in terms of liberty og uh, dili na philosophical it's more on political ang para sa mga romans sa mga sa mga romanhon uh, i would uh, first uh, cite uh, Augusto Cesar uh, sa iyang uh, book niya, Res Gestae Devi Augusti. So, uh, so kini nga libro, gisulat kini in, in, the, in Latin but was uh, translated into to English. Now, the idea of freedom in Roman thought shifted from the individualistic view of Greek philosophers to the idea of collective freedom a freedom from tyranny for example sa ato nang giingon kang augustus caesar uh, ni atong uh, siya nabuhi 63 bc to 1480 at the opening section of his book res gestae devi augusti says this matonia at the age of 19 on my own responsibility and at my own expense i raised an army with which I successfully championed the liberty of the Republic when I was oppressed by the tyranny of a faction. Okay, so 
uh, then he he opened the, the the very first paragraph of that book uh, 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 immediately uh, talk about uh, liberty the liberty of the republic then uh, uh, Augusto Sisa proceeds to say that the Senate acknowledges his achievements with honors including membership in the Senate and military command. Uh, he restored order during times of crisis, drove into exiles the murderers of his father. Ang bukas wag i-murder man gudong iyang amahan, ang iyang amahan si Julius Caesar, which is actually dili ni amahan, kundi uncle, iyang uh, uncle niya, iyang uh, uyuan. And he defeated those who threatened the Republic. He further emphasized justice and clemency, sparing the lives of citizens who ask for mercy. Those citizens who serve in the military were rewarded by him with lands and monetary incentives. And he allowed many of the privileged to settle in many colonies. So Augustus, Augustus achieved victories in various civil and foreign wars and captured numerous enemy ships. Augustus Caesar's action, as described in the passage, reflect his commitment to championing, championing Republican liberty by raising an army to defend the Roman Republic from oppressive factions. Then he emphasizes his role in restoring order and stability during times of civil strife, believing that a stable Republic safeguards the right and freedom of citizens. Augustus's uh, dedication to justice, evident in his pursuit of those who threaten the Republic and his establishment of legal tribunals, making emphasis on the importance of justice as a pillar of Roman liberty. His clemency towards them who sought mercy aligned with the Roman idea of freedom, fostering truth or trust, sorry, trust in a rather just system. Additionally, he tied the concept of freedom to economic well-being by rewarding the settling military veterans, thereby promoting their financial security. His military victories and commitment to rational defense serve as safeguards for Roman freedom, ensuring the security and liberty of the Roman people. So, nag shift din he from Greeks' philosophical ideas of freedom to the Roman idea of liberty. Nag shift nga kining idea may tungod sa freeness of man from outside constraints. Uh, it's not only about uh, philosophical. Uh, philosophical freedom, which is a very individualistic in the the, the 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 Greek concept, but also the collective freedom, freedom of the people from the disputic or from the tyran ty, ty, tyranny of the rulers. O din he iyanggi pasabot nga tyrants katung mga ang Roman senators. Labi na kadtong mga nag uh, nag uh, nag uh, patay kang uh, Julius Caesar. Now, again, because uh, ah ako ni siya magkasunod predecessor og ang iyang uh, uh, successor. So ang predecessor niya is si Julius Caesar. Si Jul Julius Caesar nagsulat og uh, na siya gitawag nga komentaryo sa uh, kining uh, uh, sa, sa wars. Uh, usan na niya na isang uh, civil wars uh, sa Rome. Okay, so the concept of liberty advocated by Augustus Caesar, which sought freedom from oppressive governance, was not a novel concept. During the era of his predecessor and uncle being his adoptive father, as I said before, Julius Caesar, amid the turmoil of the Roman civil war, a pivotal moment occurred during the siege of Corfinium. So during the civil war, uh, ingan eh, uh, sa diha nga si uh, Julius Caesar, si Julius Caesar usaka ugangan ni Pompey, pari si Pompeius. O si Pompey, uh, mo gisaligan sa mga senators sa Rome, sa uh, ang, uh, usaka general si Pompey, o uh, usapod ka Usapod ka daku kayo o granggo kini si Julius Caesar. O ga din he, tungod ka civil war man, kakampi ni Pompey ang gobyerno, ang katong mga uh, senador sa Rome. 
Now, din himo gi-suportahan gi ng mga senators si Pompey o uh, si Cesar Caron is uh, will will be making a a rebellion against the the Roman government. O uh, he is making a siege na o uh, kada ang kada municipality, every municipality. He he went there and conquered every municipality and uh, by besieging them. They he besieged them. One of these municipalities was named Corfinium. It was here that Julius Caesar, leading his forces against Pompey, articulated his commitment to the liberties of the Roman people in their struggle against what he perceived as the tyranny of the Senate, aided by Pompey's support. He overall object, his, his overall objective was to liberate Rome from this challenging political predicament. So dinha uh, akong gihatag ang, ang footnotes and uh, most sa akong mga libro is a PDF or uh, EPUB and if you are uh, if you are interested I can and I can give you those uh, for you to read for yourselves Now 50 or 60 years back si Marcus Tullius Cicero a Roman senator and orator who wrote his celebrated work the republica now kanang three words guna abi na kog uh, sa ato is ang republica to one word roman pero sa ila is re then publica uh, gi, gi, gi translate ka ng libro into to english which meant the republic or on the commonwealth now this book is uh bears the Cicero's, uh, Cicero's uh, idea on I, on liberty. The book one of Cicero, the Republica, sets the stage for the philosophical dialogue and introduces the characters and context. The dialogue is set in the year 129 BCE, that is before Christian era, and features a fictional conversation among prominent Roman statesmen and philosophers including Scipio, Africanus the Younger, Gaius, Laelius, and others. The work is presented as a conversation that took place in the home of Scipio Aemilianus, a leading Roman general and politician. The characters discuss the recent death of Scipio Africanus the Elder, a highly respected Roman general who had played a crucial role in defeating Hannibal during the Second Punic War. The dialogue reflects on Scipio's virtues, particularly his commitment to the Roman Republic and his efforts to maintain its stability and greatness. The dialogue explores the idea that political leaders should possess both political and moral virtues. Scipio is depicted as a virtuous statesman who appealed the principles of justice, integrity, and the common good. Friendship is a central theme in Book One. So the Republica. The characters discuss the importance of genuine friendship among political leaders and its role in fostering trust and cooperation within the state. One of Cicero's characters, Scipio, in the Republica, engages in philosophical discussions about the nature of the ideal state and what constitutes good governance when he put these words into Scipio's mouth. As Nisipio. Matonia. But in monarchies, no one else has sufficient access to share justice or to deliberate uh, deliberative responsibility. And in the rule of an aristocracy, the people have hardly any share in liberty. Now notice uh, he mentions liberty. Since they lack any role in common deliberation and power, and when everything is done by the people itself no matter how just and moderate it may be, that very quality is itself inequitable in that it recognizes no degrees of status. And so, even if Cyrus the Great of Persia was the most just and most wise of kings, that still does not seem to be a very desirable concern of the people, for that is what I called the commonwealth earlier, since it was ruled by the decisions of a single man. Even though our clients, the people of Marches, are ruled with the greatest justice by choosing leading citizens, 
the condition of the people still involves a form of slavery. And when the Athenians at certain times after the Aeropagos had been deprived of its authority, did nothing except by the decisions and decrees of the people, the state did not maintain its splendor since there were no recognized degrees of status. Now, diri, makita ni mo nga ang, ang, ang kaning uh, liberty nga iyang ginamin is when people lack any role in common deliberation and power. Tapos din he is the opposite of that is uh, kaning ang, ang mga tao uh, na sa condition nga diin it they involves a form of slavery kanang uh, kanang tyranny so wala ni diha ni ana wala ang freedom sa panahon sa slavery ug sa diha nga mga katawhan walay share sa sa good governance dili sila mo share kundi ang mag govern ang mga uh, uh, mga kining oligarchs ra or ang mga naa sa gahom ang elites or in in the case of the monarchy ang king uh, they don't have the participation in the governance or in the in running the republic so in that case ang tawag ni ana is the 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 absence of freedom now in this passage Cicero further contemplates the delicate equilibrium between the authority of the state and the rights and freedoms of its citizens Cicero's concept of liberty, as articulated through Scipio's argument, emphasizes the paramount importance of a balanced and just system of government, one that steers clear of extreme concentrations of power and dual acknowledges varying degrees of societal status. In Cicero's perspective, liberty is intrinsically linked to the equi equilibrium, that is the uh, delicate balance, between government, authority, and the consent and active involvement of the governed. Now, take note that throughout the history of humanity, the concept of freedom and liberty have fluctuated, ranging from moderate to extreme expressions, encompassing individual, collective, and civil dimensions, as well as political aspects. Over time, these ideas transition from their origins in Roman thought to other parts of Europe during the Renaissance and Enlightenment periods, and ultimately played pivotal roles in both the French and American revolutions. All these external ideas have also exerted influence on the theological thinking of scholars and theologians over the centuries, leading to a central question. The question is, where does human freedom reside? This question has become a focal point in theological discussion. The church, is, the church found itself divided between the views of Pelagius, who, who championed the idea of free will, uh, humanistic free will, that is, and Augustine, who championed also and advocated the concept of predestination. From the perspectives of theology and philosophy, free will appears incompatible with divine predestination. In other realms of discussion, there exists a delicate balance between God's sovereignty and human responsibility. The fundamental question revolves around whether humanity is accountable for its actions or not. Pelagians and Armenians assert that without freedom, individuals cannot be held responsible for their deeds. In contrast, Augustinianism and Calvinism argue that only God possesses absolute freedom and will while mankind's role is to act in accordance with God's will. In our up upcoming lectures, Lord willing, sa, sa sunod ng mga Mondays, we will delve deeper into the concept of liberty and freedom, especially exploring how these qualities become inherent to every Christian. We will emphasize that true freedom is attainable only for those who have been liberated from the bondage of sin, self, and Satan. And this liberation is ultimately found in Jesus Christ. Additionally, we will assert that freedom is not the absence of God's rule, but rather an expression of harmony with God's divine will. So, ang, ang freedom, uh, kana ang, ang bisat imong tanawon, kana ang uh, per pervasive idea of freedom sa civilizations. Og, imong, kung imong tanawon, kana ang freedom, 
uh, mo ka na ang ang gitudlo sa mga eskwelahan no? and uh, that's very humanistic uh, kana nga freedom actually is uh, mankind's uh, elaborate attempt para nga iyang ipakita kung unsa gyud ang kagawasan sa matag usa unsa ang buot pasabot sa kagawasan o gi claim kana sa tao nga kana nga kagawasan na ana kanila but uh, biblically speaking ang which is we will we talking that about in the next few lectures uh, true freedom can only be found in in God in Jesus Christ not in this world now that freedom kana nga thoughts of freedom from those Greeks the Romans to Europe and again uh, to the uh, English and American writers no uh, sa mga deists as a deism kana nga a concept of freedom ila kanang gi, gi adapt and they and they adapted it and applied that idea of freedom with religion okay so let's uh, talk about freedom and liberty according to deists uh, while deism and arminianism are two distinct philosophies deism is more philosophical and rational drawing its ideas primarily from humanistic perspectives Arminianism, on the other hand, derives its stance from biblical sources. Nevertheless, both are compatible with the idea that God does not seek to override the will of humanity. Instead, God grants individuals freedom and liberty to make choices without influencing their decisions. In England, DSM found advocates among individuals such as John Locke and Anthony Collins. While in America, it was championed by figures like Thomas Paine and Thomas Jefferson. Guests did not hold unanimous uh, beliefs regarding God and religion. Some believed in God and immortality, while others did not. However, they all rejected the idea of God's revelation in Christ and the notion of salvation being exclusively found in Him. Hence, they shared a common belief that a transcendent God does not actively participate in a daily or minute affairs of the universe, let alone in the matters of his intelligent and rational creatures. They both believed that God had set the initial course and destiny of everything, allowing the universe to operate according to his plan while preserving the freedom of thought and movement for humanity. So, uh, ang ang DSM ang, ang aron masabtan kani we will uh, cite the the common analogy of the clock and its and its maker the analogy of the clock maker is often used to illustrate the DS perspective on the relationship between God and the universe na mo ni ang utasabot sa mga DS uh, in using this illustration imagine a finely crafted and intricate mechanical clock. According to DSM, this clock represents the universe. Now, consider the clockmaker who is an analogy for God in the DS view. Here are the key elements of this analogy. The clock symbolizes the universe, including all of its intricate mechanisms, laws of nature and order. DSs believe that the universe operates according to these laws, much like a clock operates according to its gears and mechanisms. The clockmaker represents God in the DS perspective. God is seen as the creator who designed the universe, set it in motion, and established the natural laws that govern it. Like a skilled clockmaker, God fashioned the universe with precision and purpose. In the DS view, once the clock or universe is set in motion by the clockmaker, God, God does not actively intervene in its ongoing operation. God is distant and does not perform miracles, does not answer prayers, or does not intervene in the affairs of human beings. Instead, God's rule is limited to the act of creation. The laws of nature, such as gravity, electromagnetism, and thermo thermodynamics are analogous to the gears and mechanisms of the clock. These laws operate consistently and predictably, governing the behavior of the universe. So, DSM asserts that human beings possess 
who says free will and the capacity for rational thought. Just as the gears of a clock move independently involves uh, in, it involves individuals having the freedom to make choices and decisions with, within the framework of natural laws. So Diaz emphasized uh, the use of reason and rationality to understand the universe and its workings. They believe that through observation and logical inquiry, human beings can gain insights into the creator's design. So ang, ang Diaz, uh, wala pakialam ang Diyos sa kada uh, kada pangitabo sa yuta. Kung dili ang mga pangitabo, matagkaroon niya, mataggutlo. No? Daan na, na siya nga na-set up, pero wala diha ang Diyos. Ang Diyos, distant sa iyang creations, o uh, ang tanan ng butang, mo, mo, uh, mo lihok, ang movement sa tanang butang, naga revolve around sa sa characteristic or sa unsa ang uh, ang ang program nga daan na nga giset up sa Diyos. Now another uh, writer that uh, delineates on the concept of liberty is John Stuart Mill uh, on his book on liberty. Uh, we will uh, summarize his his uh, his principle, his teaching, uh, his doctrine on the principle of liberty. Uh, the central theme of liberty, according to Mill, is the harm principle which states that individuals should be free to do as they please as long as their actions do not harm others. The only justification for limiting an individual's liberty is to prevent harm to others. Mill emphasizes the importance of individual autonomy and the freedom to make one's own choices and decisions. He argues that individuals should have the freedom to live their lives according to their own beliefs and desires as long as they do not harm others. Mill is a stance defender of humanistic freedom, that is the freedom of speech and expression. He believes that even unpopular or offensive ideas should be allowed to be expressed and debated as they contribute to the marketplace of ideas and the advancement of knowledge. Mill is concerned about the potential for the majority to oppress minority views and lifestyles in a democratic society. Mill argues that society should protect the right of minority individuals and prevent the tyranny of the majority. While Mill advocates for individual liberty, he recognizes that these are cases where there are cases where the state intervenes or the state's intervention may be necessary to prevent harm or protect the public interest. However, such interventions should be limited and justified by the harm principle. So, Mill believes that individual liberty is essential for personal growth and self-development. He sees freedom as a means to experiment with different ways of life and discover one's own values and preferences. Kini kang Mill, John Stuart Mill, nga idea sa liberty, mo ni siyang idea sa karon sa atong panahon. Bisang unsa pa sa tao pag himo bisang unsa. Ba as long as dili man makahatag harm sa uban, di man makahasul sa uban, pwede ra. Uh, which is uh, sa kini nga butang actually, uh, dili dili ni siya compatible sa biblical idea, biblical idea sa sa freedom. Because uh, bisan pa kung ingag wala im direct harm para sa uban, pero it could harm the moral of society it could influence society halimbawa sa atong panahon karon ang kaning uh, uh, issue sa same sex marriage issue sa uh, transgenderism uh, mo ingon man sila uh, my body my choice uh, sila ra ang makabalo sa pag uh, ila na nga kagawasan sila ra ang tang iya sa ilang body o kana tungod kay sila ra pwede ra sila nga magmutilate sa ilang kugalingon aron ma transgender sila o, pero bisan pa kung walay direct harm but ang, ang influence mo harm kana sa future na sa mga bata in fact karon nagasugod na sa mga eskwelahan uh, didto sa Amerika o sa uban sa Europe uh, nga uh, duna na ang ang kanang kanang drug queen nila So there is no such thing as uh, as uh, harmless 
uh, freedom nga uh, sa idea ni John Stuart Mill. There, there is a harmless freedom if this freedom is the biblical freedom. Muna atong ipag-assert. Now, let's go to American idea of liberty. O uh, kaninga idea sa liberty, muna siyang idea na diin uh, ang Pilipinas. Uh, direct uh, na influensyahan. In fact, our, even our constitution, our 1986 uh, in, uh, in 1987 uh, constitution uh, directly copy from the Constitution of the United States. Uh, let's cite uh, Thomas Paine. Let's uh, see what he 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 thinks about uh, liberty. In 1776, Thomas Paine published this famous pamphlet, Common Sense. This public argued for the American colonies' independence from British rule. This pamphlet, Paine passionate, pass, passionately advocated for the principles of liberty self-governance, and republicanism. He made a compelling case for why the American colonists should break free from British monarchy and establish a democratic republic based on the consent of the governed. Common sense, the, 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 the pamphlet, played a crucial role in galvanizing public support for independence and is considered a foundational document of the, the American Revolution. But good as it may seem, Paine published in 1794 and 1794 and 1795 rather another book called The Age of Reason, in which he not only defined liberty in terms of American independence from England, but American independence from the Christian faith. Uh, sa iyang uh, sa maong uh, book, in The Age of Reason, I quote. Uh, I do not believe in the creed professed by the Jewish church, by the Roman church, by the Greek church, by the Turkish church, by the Protestant church, nor by any church that I know of. My own mind is my own church. All, all national institutions of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to me no other than human inventions set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profit. So, kini nga idea sa, sa liberty, uh, ang idea sa liberty from the, the tyranny of politics or politicians, uh, he shifted it as an idea of uh, being liberated from the tyranny of religion. Again, in that same book, he says, every national church or religion has established itself by pretending some special mission from God, communicated to certain individuals. The Jews have their Moses, the Christians their Jesus Christ, their apostles and saints, and the Turks their Mahomet, as if the way to God was not open to every man alike. Each of those churches shows certain books which they call revelation or the word of God. The Jews say that their word of God was given by God to Moses face to face. The Christians say that their word of God came by divine inspiration. The Turks say that their word of God, the Quran, was brought by an angel from heaven. Each of those churches accuses the other of unbelief. And for my own part, I disbelieve them all. See, so... Uh, makita ni mo ang iyang idea sa sa sa, sa liberty nga nga murag anti religion gyud si si kining si uh, Paine Thomas Paine uh, another figure in the 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 American history is Thomas Jefferson Thomas Jefferson was a complex figure when it comes to matters of religion and liberty he was a strong advocate for the separation of church and state and believed in religious freedom and tolerance. His views on religion can be summarized as follows. First, ja Thomas Jefferson is perhaps best known for his role in drafting the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom in 1777, 
which was later passed in 1786. This statute laid the foundation for the principle of religious freedom in the United States. It proclaimed that individuals should be free to practice their religion without interference from the state and that government should not establish or promote any particular religion. Then Jefferson's personal religious beliefs leaned towards deism, a philosophical position that we, we uh, discussed before, which rejects organized religion and emphasizes reason and the existence of a distant, non-intervening deity. Deists believe in a creator, but often reject the idea of divine revelation or religious dogma. Jefferson's private letters and the writings suggest that he held deistic beliefs. In 1804, while he was president of the United States, Jefferson created his own version of the New Testament, known as the Jefferson Bible, or the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth. He did this by taking a razor to existing copies of the New Testament and cutting out the portions he considered to be supernatural or miraculous, focusing instead of, on Jesus' moral teachings and ethical principles. He saw this as a way to distill the essence of Jesus' teachings and remove what he views as superstition. Jefferson's Actions including his role in promoting religious freedom and his creation of the Jefferson Bible, can be seen as consistent with his idea of American liberty and the principle of unlimited tolerance in other religions. His beliefs reflected the enlightenment values of reason, freedom of thought, and the rejection of religious coercion. Now, to summarize, uh, Karun, uh, ang idea sa tao, sa kasagaran ng mga tao sa, sa liberty, so freedom, so liberty. Uh, freedom and liberty can be understood in very ways, various ways. And scholars and philosophers have proposed different distinctions and classifications. While the terminology may vary, they are generally uh, there are generally two primary primary kinds of categories of freedom and liberty. Unang kategorya, kiningitawang negative freedom or negative liberty. Negative freedom or negative liberty refers to the absence of external obstacles, constraints, or interference in an individual's actions. In this sense, negative freedom is often associated with the idea of freedom from external coercion or interference by others or the state. It emphasizes non-interference and the protection of individual rights and autonomy. Of course, John Stuart Mill's harm principle which limits uh, government intervention to prevent harm to others, is an example of a concept closely related to negative freedom. Then uh, one uh, category, the other category is positive freedom or positive liberty. Positive freedom or positive liberty, on the other hand, focuses on the capacity or capability of individuals to act in pursuit of their goals and aspirations. It involves the idea of freedom to do something or freedom to achieve certain outcomes. Positive freedom implies that individuals not only need to be free from external constraints, but also have the resources, opportunities, and the capabilities necessary to lead fulfilling lives. This perspective often leads to discussions of social justice, equal opportunities, and the role of the state in addressing inequalities. There is such thing as civil liberties. Civil liberties pertain to the fundamental rights and freedoms that protect individuals from government interference or abuses of power. These rights include freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and the right to privacy. Civil liberties are often enshrined in constitutions and legal framework to ensure the protection of individual rights rights and freedoms. Then there is what we call political liberties. Political liberties specifically relate to an individual's rights and freedoms in the context of political participation and governance. These include the right to vote, the right to run for office, the right to participate in political associations, 
the right to engage in political expression and activism. Political liberties are essential for the functioning of democratic societies where citizens have a say in the decision-making process. Now, while these distinctions are common in discussions of freedom and liberty, it's important to note that the boundaries between these categories can sometimes be blurred and different philosophical and political perspectives may emphasize, may emphasize one aspect more than the other. Additionally, the interpretation and prioritization of various freedoms and liberties can vary across cultures and societies. Now, kana atong gihisgutan, they are purely humanistic understanding of what we call freedom and liberty. But uh, we will, uh, we anyway, we will talk more about this in the next, uh, in the next uh, lectures concerning how we understand biblically freedom and liberty. But uh, we will crit critic, uh, however, the, the this humanistic views that we have discussed uh, above uh, in a reform perspective. Now, first is the ideas of freedom and liberty rooted in Greek, Roman, English, and American ideals have their origins in humanistic rationalism and find their foundation in humanist perspectives. These ideas convey the concept that humanity is autonomous and not under the direct control of God. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, because of uh, the deistic principle that the that uh, that those philosophers, those uh, founders in American society, uh, held. Man is the measure of all things, as stated by the Greek philosopher Protagoras. And man is the master of his fate and the captain of his soul, as is famously expressed in the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley. The essence of these ideas lies in the belief that many philosophers and thinkers did not adhere to the biblical God and their thoughts influenced their decisions and actions. As René Descartes proclaimed cogito ergo sum, emphasizing the primacy of human reason and consciousness. According to this perspective, there is no higher authority outside of humanity. Whether freedom is seen as the unfailed, unfettered or nature of man, as Plato teaches in his Republic, or as the delicate balance between pain and pleasure and ethical choices based on their moral essence, as Aristot Aristotle teaches in his Nicomachean Ethics, or if liberty is defined as the active participation of the people in government without oppression by tyrants, as advocated by the early Caesars in Rome, or whether it is viewed as a as an individual's liberation from God's overshadowing presence, as the DS proposed, or simply as humanity's unrestricted choices, as long as they do not harm their fellow human beings, as Mill's concept of freedom. All of these ideas are not compatible with the teachings of the Holy Scriptures. First and foremost, God alone possesses unfettered liberty and freedom. And he directly controls everything beyond himself. God's freedom is tempered by his wisdom, ensuring that all his actions are characterized by goodness, holiness, and justice. Nothing in the world occurs without his guidance. Everything unfolds according to his wise and deliberate providence and power. Therefore, nothing happens by chance or accident, and nothing is the result of mere luck. God has not left his rational creatures to act as they please. While some may believe that their exercise of sheer will and unrestricted movements allow them to control all things, this is not the case. Abina ada babinato abi sa mga tao nga sila gyud ang tag-iya sa tanang panguna-huna ug sa ilang linihukan. But it's not the case as stated in Acts 17:28 for in him we live and move and have our being. Now absolute freedom is the outcome of complete independence. The state is referred to as aseity which derived from the Latin word ase which signify from oneself. Consequently, as only God possesses the attribute of aseity, 
God alone is self-contained and self-sufficient to himself. This kind of freedom, if assumed by men, is enticing and satisfying to our desires because we aspire to be our own gods and assume divine rules. We seek complete autonomy and independence, essentially rejecting any authority above us that dictates our thoughts and actions. Therefore, the notion of freedom from external restraints and constraints, though it may seem noble and ideal, is not the true freedom or liberty we possess. We are created to be subjects to our creator, and even within the domains of civil and political governance, God retains ultimate control. While we may think and act according to our will, everything still unfolds in accordance with God's divine plan. Secondly, the freedom we desire is not the kind of freedom we possess. First, we are all creatures, and as such, we have inherent limitations. These limitations encompass aspects of time, matter, and space. Furthermore, our knowledge of ultimate truths is merely analogous to God's eternal, infinite, and immutable knowledge of himself and all his creations. We are unable to fully comprehend ourselves. Mismo kitaw nga ni, di nga ni ta makaila, di kahit nakakita o makasayod sa atong kogalingon, lawas o kalag. Uh, mismo atong sulod, organs, wala na atong makita. So, daghay buta nga, di lita free. We are unable to comprehend ourselves and our relationship with God exists within the framework of creator and creatures. So, doon ay relasyon, creator and creatures relationship. The vast chasm that separates us from God is immeasurable, and there is no bright bridge that can connect us to his level of understanding, unless, of course, through his covenant, when he condescends to make himself intelligible to us. Additionally, the pervasive influence of sin is another critical factor. The moral effects of our fall into sin serve as a barrier between us and God. Corruption has touched every aspect of our beings, clouding our minds with inaccuracies and errors, making it impossible for us to think as we should. When we believe we are truly free, we often find ourselves wandering into the labyrinths of confusions and chaos, mistakenly identifying it with as freedom. So if you grant unlimited freedom to a man, he may become tyrannical, seeking freedom only for himself while denying it to others. At times, individuals mis uh, mistake arbitrariness for freedom. And in other instances, they confuse lawlessness with freedom. All of these outcomes stem from the changes that have occurred within us since the fall. We have a tendency to distort and pervert many aspects of life. So in the end, since individuals act out of necessity, whether intentionally or not, and as people are interdependent on one another, we can, we can argue that the liberty envisioned and imagined by intellectuals, authors, and thinkers, mga Ethiopians, is merely a product of their loftiest human aspirations. As long as this fallen world contains sinful individuals, such uh, liberty dreamed by utopians cannot be realized or attained. Regardless of one's wicked disposition, every man is bound by God's law, the creator who made them. They are not autonomous beings. They owe God worship and obedience. As long as humans are accountable for their actions, they are not truly free. God only is truly free. The day of reckoning will arrive when the judge of all the earth will be seated on his throne to judge both the living and the dead. In conclusion, let me quote Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? 
or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance will doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Amen. So, uh, any question? So, adine ang, ang freedom, ang liberty. Uh, ato ng sugdan pag discuss next uh, next uh, week, Lord willing. Nga ang ang liberty o ang freedom uh, nga iya sa kalibutan, lahi ra sa freedom o liberty nga uh, atong masayran sa sa Bible sa Bible. Kung walay uh, pangutana, uh, matuta ka ron sa atong uh, pag-ampo. Atong isirado kinipinagi sa atong pag-ampo. Let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you for this uh, privilege of studying about freedom and liberty. And according to your word, Freedom and liberty can only be found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Salamat gino nga ang Bible adunay answer, adunay itubag sa among mga pangutana may towards freedom of liberty. Kung ang kagawasan sa kalibutan naaman ang ilang gi, gina, gina pangandoy, ang tinuod nga kagawasan gino na sa sa pag-ila kanimo ingon nga ikaw ang maghatag og balaod Kung kami mawang mag taga, uh, imong gibuhat o uh, naga magatuman sumala sa imong balaw. Salamat ginoon ni ining ang mga lesson and we pray nga ikaw magatudlo ka namo pinagi pag uh, sa pag uh, pag mismo pag uh, delve sa text sa Westminster Confession of Faith sa sa freedom o sa Christian sa sa liberty of conscience. Kining tanan ang giampo Nining kabiyo na, nga ikaw magpanalangin ka namo sa among mga pagpamahulay. Sa mga matag-usa, sa among pagdumala sa among mga iglesia, ikaw magpanalangin ka namo tanan. Ni among giyampo, sa ngalan ni Ginoong Sikristo. Amen. <tinyo>